which is why Art Talk 129 kicks off with a truly magnificent artist, Michael Angelo. Let's switch over to Sarah. Sarah, Happy New Year to you. Hello, Happy New Year. I hope everyone had a great holiday season. Uh, we are, yes, starting off with a very famous, very magnificent artist that I'm sure most of you are at least somewhat familiar with. Uh, Michelangelo was an Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet of the High Renaissance. Born in the Republic of Florence, his work was inspired by models of classical antiquity and really had a lasting influence on Western art. Michelangelo achieved fame early. Two of his best known works, uh, La Pieta and David, were sculpted before the age of 30. In fact, two biographies of his life were published while he was still alive. So that just shows the success he had during his career as well as his lasting legacy. He was born in a town called Caprese, uh, now known as Caprese Michelangelo near Arezzo, Italy. And his father owned a marble quarry outside of Florence, uh, where he was raised. And so this is where it's said that he got his love of marble and obviously sculpture. During his childhood, a team of painters had been called from Florence to the Vatican to decorate the walls of the Sistine Chapel. Among them was Domenico Ghirlandaio, a master in fresco painting, figure drawing, and portraiture, who had the largest workshop in Florence and whom Michelangelo happened to be apprenticed under. When Lorenzo de' Medici, the ruler of Florence at the time, asked Ghirlandaio for his best pupils to attend Medici's academy, Ghirlandaio sent Michelangelo. Lorenzo de' Medici's death in 1492 brought a reversal of Michelangelo's circumstances. He left the security of the Medici court and returned to his father's house. In the following months, he carved a polychrome wooden crucifix as a gift to the prior of the Florentine Church of Santo Spirito, which had allowed him to do some anatomical studies of the corpses from the church's hospital. Uh, this was the first of several instances during his career that Michelangelo studied anatomy by dissecting cadavers. Uh, and, and this crucifix is especially notable for the fact that uh, this Christ is naked, which is true to the Gospels in Psalm 22, 18. Today, the crucifix is in the octagonal sacristy of the Basilica of Santa Maria del Santo Spirito. Madonna della Scala, or Madonna of the Stairs, is a relief sculpture by Michelangelo in uh, the Casa Buonarroti in Florence. It was sculpted around 1490 when Michelangelo was about 15, so young, and this is one of his first sculptures he ever made, which would make sense if he was 15 years old. Uh, and this piece is kind of an homage or callback to some of the sculptors that came before him, like Donatello and Ghirlandaio. Uh, the figure of the Madonna sitting on a square stone block and in profile while looking away occupies the entire height of the relief from edge to edge with a severity reminiscent of classical reliefs. Michelangelo found fame early in life, as I mentioned before, with La Pieta being one of his most famous works. It's a Roman Catholic sculpture of Jesus and Mary at Mount Golgotha, the place where Jesus is, is said to have been crucified. Uh, and the statue was originally commissioned for a Cardinal of France, Jean-Bierre de Lagrala, a serving French ambassador in Rome. So the Carrera marble sculpture was made for the Cardinal's uh, funeral monument, but was moved to its current location at St. Peter's Basilica. And this interpretation of the Pieta is unprecedented in Italian sculpture because it balances the Renaissance ideals of classical beauty also with naturalism. I feel like I keep saying every work is one of Michelangelo's most notable, but we must talk about David when talking about Michelangelo. David is a masterpiece of Renaissance sculpture created in marble between 1501 and 1504 stands about 17 feet tall, and of course represents the biblical figure of David. It was originally commissioned as one of a series of statues of prophets to be positioned along the roof line uh, of the east end of the Florence Cathedral, but instead it was placed in a public square outside of the Palazzo Vecchio, the seat of civic government in Florence. 
It has since been replaced by a replica and the original here seen is located at the Galleria dell'Accademia. And according to most scholars, David is depicted before his battle with Goliath. Instead of being shown victorious over a foe much larger than he, David looks tense and ready for battle after he's made the decision to fight Goliath, but before the battle has actually taken place. This sculpture of Moses is housed in the Church of San Pietro in Vincoli in Rome, commissioned in 1505 by Pope Julius II for his tomb. It depicts the biblical figure of Moses with horns on his head, based on a description in chapter 34 of Exodus in the Bible. The statue represents uh, when Moses descends from the mountain the first time, carrying the tablets and finds the Hebrew people worshiping the golden calf. Seated in a serious attitude, he rests with one arm on the tablets and with the other, he holds his glossy beard. And this piece sits at the center of Pope Julius II's tomb in San Pietro. The entombment is a painting depicting the burial of Jesus, and it's actually unfinished. As you can see, some of the details and coloring is missing. According to documents discovered in, in 1981, actually, uh, Michelangelo had been commissioned in 1500 to paint a panel for the funerary chapel at the Church of St. Augustino in Rome, but in the end gave back the sum received. And it's probable that this work they were talking about was the entombment, which remained unfinished. The description of the painting in the National Gallery's catalog suggests that Michelangelo departed uh, and um, gave back the money from this project to go and secure a large block of marble that would then become his David sculpture, which he began to sculpt in 1501. Donitondo, or Holy Family, was painted for a Florentine merchant, Agnolo Doni, whose prestigious marriage to Maddalena Strozzi in 1504 took place in a period that was crucial for early 16th century Florentine art. This piece was done in a tondo or a round, which is frequently associated with the Italian Renaissance. And this piece is now located at the Uffizi Gallery. So the Sistine Chapel ceiling, probably the piece we were all waiting for, painted in fresco by Michelangelo between 1508 and 1512, is a cornerstone work of high Renaissance art. So fresco is a technique of mural painting on freshly laid wet plaster. So the water in the wet plaster is used as a vehicle for the dry powder pigment to merge uh, with the plaster. And with the setting of the plaster, the painting becomes an integral part of the wall itself. So the ceiling was painted at the commission of Pope Julius II, who, as we know now, had a relationship with Michelangelo. And central to the ceiling decoration are nine scenes from the book of Genesis, including the famous creation of Adam in the center. The complex design includes several sets of figures, some clothed, some nude, really allowing Michelangelo to fully demonstrate his skill in depicting the human figure in a wide variety of poses. Uh, the ceiling was immediately well received and imitated by other artists continuing all the way to the present day. It has been restored multiple times, most recently in the late 20th century. So the creation of Adam, the painting within this fresco, uh, it illustrates the biblical creation narrative from the book of Genesis, in which God gives life to Adam, the first man. Uh, the fresco is chronologically the fourth in the series of panels depicting the, the different uh, episodes from Genesis. And the creation of Adam is one of the most replicated religious paintings of all time. So here are some of his drawings and sketches. Prior to his death in Rome in 1564, Michelangelo had burned, quote, quite a large number of his own drawings, sketches, and cartoons so that no one should see the labors he endured and the ways he tested his genius, lest he should appear less than perfect. So it's partly because of his desire for perfection that his graphic work is so rare and valuable. Even Leonardo, his nephew and heir, was obliged to pay a really high price for a group of his drawings uh, that came onto the Roman market after Michelangelo's death. His work has had a lasting influence on Western art. His 
creative abilities and mastery in a range of artistic areas defined him as a giant of high Florentine Renaissance art and of global art history as a whole. Thanks everyone. Hey, thank you so much, Sarah. Now, which magnificent piece was your favorite? Oh, I mean, I think just the grandeur of the whole ceiling mm. of the Sistine Chapel is it's just like a feat of, of human creative capabilities. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. You know, and I agree. I, but my favorite still is the warrior, right? Um, the piece of art, uh, the statue of David, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Can you imagine 17 feet tall carved out of a, a single block of marble? You know, David is, is brave, strong. Uh, still, he's in, you know, he's in the role of the underdog taking on Goliath. Uh, David reminds me of our associates. Yeah, that's the history of our firm for 40 years. Yep. We're typically the underdog helping our clients who are the underdog win that's right? right, and execute. Yeah. Now, that was also one of my favorite shock. Uh, I didn't realize that that pose was of David before his battle with, with yeah. Goliath. Now, of course, the creation of man paint on the Sistine Chapel, I also agree with you, Sarah, is a classic. Now, I, I do know, though, that... Uh, that one of our benefactors, uh, uh, incredible friend of the firm and supporter, uh, Michael Kane of Caltius, has a, a portrait of himself worthy of Michelangelo <laughs> just, just behind his, in his office. Indeed. So maybe we'll get a comment from Michael if he's attending this, this, uh, today's uh, Town Hall of the Year. I, I, am I am attending, and that, that portrait will go uh, unmentioned at this point, but it is a classic. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can get Sarah Kane to give permission to show it, I will, but I'm guessing you might not get that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, so thank you for joining us, Michael. And what a, what a great start of the year, Sarah and Michael, 2023, if an introduction to Michelangelo. And, and uh, Michael Kane. And Michael Kane. <laughs> yes, indeed.